Hello and welcome to this edition of the Airport News Show, a half hour informational program about the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. I'm Debbie Jones, Community Relations Administrator. In spite of gas prices and the changes in the aviation industry, many people will be flying this summer. And so to give you some tips and suggestions to make your travel through the Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful, I've invited some special guests for today's program. And I want to get started because on our first segment, we're going to talk about parking, which is something a lot of people traveling through the airport will need, and some of the amenities that you may find at the airport. Airport. For our second segment, we'll talk about the all-important security checkpoint and other tips from an airline's perspective to make your travel a little less stressful and maybe even more enjoyable. So I want to start right away with my first special guest, and I want to welcome Jennifer Carroll, who is the Facility Manager of Republic Parking System. Welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. I'm so glad you were able to come and talk to us because, of course, parking is a real big thing for people who are leaving Jacksonville and you were the perfect person to come talk to us a little bit about that. So before we get started, can you tell us a little bit about Republic Parking System and what the relationship is with the uh, Aviation Authority? Sure, Republic Parking System is the parking operator for the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. We started in October of 2002 and will be around another five years. So we've been there a long time and we oversee the parking facility for the Aviation Authority, including the prearranged ground transportation, the shuttle buses, the cashiers, and basically everything to do with the parking itself. And so your organization manages that whole operation. Exactly. We're a subcontractor for the Jacksonville Aviation Authority. Okay, very good. Well, let's start off by talking about some of the parking options that are available for our travelers. Can you start off? I guess we could go with the least expensive okay. option and move right up the line. Okay, well something that's helpful to remember is basically the further away you are from the terminal, the less expensive it is. Good so point. if you start mm -hmm. at economy, we have economy one and economy two. Economy one is cash or credit. Economy two is credit card only. Okay. So you have to have the exact same credit card you came in with in order to go out. Sometimes they have people say, my mom got on the plane, I parked the car, my husband doesn't have it. It's very important that you remember what credit card you use to come in and use that exact one to go out. Right. So those are both $6 a day. And all of our prices, unlike some of the others, our prices include tax. So what it's nothing bargain. above and beyond. <laughs> exactly, and right at the airport. <laughs> so Economy 1 and Economy 2 are $6 a day. Our shuttle buses run every 15 minutes, 24 hours a day, no matter what. Constant. They pick up at the bus stops only. They don't go up and down the rows and pick you up right at your car. Just for time-saving measures, they only pick up at the bus stops, which are very well um, signed and usually throughout the perimeter of both lots. Moving closer to the terminal, the first one is a daily surface lot. That's an open lot, so it's not covered. It's $10 a day. Mm -hmm. The daily garage is $12 a day, which is the next closest to the terminal. That's $12 a day, and then the hourly garage is $16 a day, and that's right across from the terminal. Now, we generally prefer people that park in the hourly garage, kind of like the meters and greeters, the people mm -hmm. that are picking people up. That's $1.50 per half hour, or any part thereof, so if it's 37 minutes, it rounds up to a full hour. So $1.50 per half hour, and then the maximum are the prices I mentioned. So the maximum for the hourly garage is 16. The maximum for the daily garage is 12. So people parking overnight, we prefer economy, the daily surface, or the daily garage. But basically, just remember, the closer you are to the terminal, the more you're going to pay. And it's important to pay close attention to the signs, because the signs are really good and will direct you along. So if you're not sure where you're going, just look for the big blue and white signs, is what I tell everybody that calls, and it'll direct you right to where you want to go. Excellent. Now, how many parking spaces in total about do we have at the airport? We have just under 10,000 with all of our lots, including wow. the temporary holiday lot, Economy 3. But the ones we use most of all, it's, close, it's right around just under 10,000. That's amazing. Now, mm -hmm. over the summer, of course, we have the July 4th weekend. And so are there any tips you can give when there are peak travel periods for mm -hmm. people who are coming to the airport to park? Definitely. Our, all the holidays are the three-day weekends, and of course, Thanksgiving and Christmas are our busiest times, mm -hmm. especially we're projecting this 4th of July to be quite busy because it's on a Friday. So it's an automatic three-day weekend. We'll probably start getting busy on that Wednesday and Thursday. And as permitted, if once the economy 
one and two are at capacity, we open what we call our holiday lot or economy three. That is a prepaid lot. You pay in advance and you, excuse me, you have a set number of days. We always tell you the number of days. The days is dictated by the aviation authority, but it's generally around six or seven days. You pay one flat rate and you can park until that date. It's $25 and it's prepaid once those two are at capacity. Then we fill economy three until it's at capacity and then we just have the lots closer to the terminal, the 10, 12, and 16. So I would recommend people call in advance. I usually tell people even don't call me the day before because I don't know. A lot could close in five minutes. Mm -hmm. I tell people to call when they're almost to the airport if they have a cell phone or right when they're leaving if they don't have a cell phone and call us and check on the status. Yeah. And the that phone number? I'm sorry, sorry. yeah. The, the phone, phone number, number to call us direct is 741-2277. And you can call us direct. We're open 24 hours a day. We can tell you what's open, what's not open. But it's also important to plan accordingly. If, if, the, if your airline suggests you get there an hour to an hour and a half advance, you want to add at least an additional 45 minutes at the holidays, at least, because it's important to be patient. You're not the only one traveling on the holiday. You know, we do our best to accommodate everyone and get everybody affordable parking. And, you know, we're there in the rain and snow and sleep trying to yeah. help everybody get parking. So that's how it works. And the time thing you mentioned, giving yourself additional time, not only to catch the shuttle that comes around mm -hmm. every 15 minutes, but also your first parking option, especially in a busy travel period, may not be available. Exactly. So if you're expecting to come park in mm -hmm. economy one or two and it's not available, you need that time to go find in the daily surface lot or in the hourly garage. Exactly, and we have signs, lit signs throughout as you're entering. If you pay attention to all the lit signs, it'll tell you as well, economy one and economy two are closed, proceed to the terminal. So pay close attention to the signs. Make sure you're in the right lane. You'll follow the arrows. Economy parking is to the right as you approach the terminal. You go make a ride on Pecan Park Road and there's blue and white signs directing you. As you're coming into the terminal, if you want to park closer to the terminal in the main plaza parking, you stay towards the left. Okay, good, good, good to know. So we talked about how much they cost and where they're located. What are some of the different payment options for people who park? You mentioned Economy 2 is credit mm -hmm. card only, mm -hmm. but what are some other payment options available to parkers? Okay, Economy 2 is the only lot that's only credit card. Everywhere else you can do cash or credit card. All of our entrances, um, ha all of our facilities have, you can swipe your credit card to get in and swipe it again to get out, or you can just push the button for a ticket and pay cash or credit card when you leave. And again, it's very important that people remember what card they're using mm -hmm. to come in. I also recommend if, they, if you do push the button for a ticket, leave it in your dashboard, leave it in your visor, remember where you put it because losing your ticket, it takes you a little bit longer to get out. You might have to pay a little bit more, but it's very important to keep track of that ticket. And there's not really a reason for you to take it on your trip. Just leave it in your car. Um, so you can do the credit card in, credit card out, um, ticket in, credit card out, or ticket in, cash out. And at the plaza, it's very important, again, to pay attention to the signs. Our first four lanes on the far right as you're leaving are credit card only. So if you swipe your credit card to get in, you can swipe that card to get out. Or if you push the button for a ticket, you can pay with your credit card to get out. It's similar to an ATM machine, just mm -hmm. as easy. Put your ticket in, put your credit card, you're out. You don't have to wait in line. There's five cars in this lane and you'll find that that's usually the fastest way to get out. There's hardly ever any cars over there and if you don't mind just doing it yourself you're going to get out faster than anybody else. It really is the fastest way to pay. And that is the credit card in, the credit card out. Mm -hmm. And the first floor, the first floor lane, the numbers, the, the lanes are all numbered mm -hmm. and it's the first four, four lanes that you can pay on your own to get out. Of course we're always there to help you. The cashiers, cashiers are there as well but as far as time's concerned it does get you out a lot faster if you pay with your credit card anyway. Well, that's wonderful to know. And now, something that people may not know, they return from their trip and uh, they have a flat tire or they can't get the car started, the battery died. Mm -hmm. Republic Parking yep. System We're has there to a serve help. You. Yes, we do. Um, there's um, assistance phones throughout many of the facilities, and if not, our phone number is placed right there. And again, we're open 24 hours a day. If you have a flat tire, we'll come out and provide air free of charge. If you um, need a jump start for your battery, some people travel weeks at a time, and you know mm -hmm. they, their battery just dies. And we'll come out and provide you a jump start, and those are both free um, services that are available to all of our customers. And so what number would somebody call if they had that 
issue when they That's return. That's the same phone number, the parking office at 741-2277. And again, look for the assistance buttons throughout the parking facilities and you can just push that button and it rings right to our office. This is a lot of excellent information about people who are parking to leave Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. And for those who are picking people up at the airport, Republic doesn't manage this, but we have our courtesy waiting lot. Right. And so passenger or people coming to pick up passengers can actually park in this courtesy waiting lot. It's right next to the administration building. Instead of turning right to go to the economy parking, you would turn left to get into that courtesy parking area free of charge. There's a big flight information board there and the best thing we recommend is because sometimes the information on the board may not be exact to what your expectations are for your incoming passenger. Have a cell phone and once that person gets off the plane, gets their bag and is standing at the curb, they just call the person in the courtesy waiting lot and under two minutes they can be at the curb picking their passenger up because obviously you can't stop and park mm -hmm. at the curbside so it is very fast and easy and it we try to point out as well that it's after the administration building and before the fountain because people kind of get lost in that turn right there so it's just between the administration building and the fountain just turn right in between the two that's right and it, it I see that it's used more and more as people mm -hmm. are becoming familiar with it. We've got a couple park benches out there and I see people walking their dogs. So it's a nice stress-free way to wait for incoming passengers. Exactly. And you're not driving in circles, Wasting using gas. up that expensive exactly. gasoline, uh, waiting for people to come. Mm -hmm. So that's been a, a, a great amenity. It is, it's helpful for everybody. Well, I appreciate all that information because I know that that's something that people really need to know as they're, as they're traveling to have a little bit of an idea of what to expect from, from their travel. Now, as people get to the airport, I just want to take, uh, we don't have much time left, but very quickly go, if I could, to the laptop and just sort of give people an idea of some of the things they're going to see at the airport. And this picture right here is our new concourse. This is new concourse A that people are now using. This was the old concourse and it's now gone. So it's going to have a different look to uh, the airport. In fact, you're going to see this in the concourse. 160 foot moving walkway, wide corridors, beautiful lighted facility. It, very, very nice. Expanded seating areas as you can see. This huge window here, lots of windows, so it's so different from the current Concourse uh, A or the, the late Concourse A. Bathrooms with no sinks, you gotta go there just to try that. And then there's going to be a lot of, just briefly go through here, a lot of different stores and restaurants that are opening for people to use. So a lot of new and exciting stuff that you can see at the airport. And so we want you to enjoy your time there. And if you have any questions in the airport, we have ambassadors. These folks are volunteers to come. They're dressed in these shirts with big ask me buttons available to ask you or answer your questions that you might have. So Jennifer, I want to thank you so much for coming and talking to us a little bit about parking. Lots of great information. Can you give us the phone number once again to the parking office? Sure. Again, it's area code 904-741-2277, 24 hours a day. Thank you. Jennifer Carroll, Facility Manager, Republic Parking System. Don't go away. Next up is talking about the security checkpoint and things you can do to make your travel through the Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful. We'll be right back. If human achievement can be determined not by speed or strength, but by character, then it's easy to see who the most amazing athletes really are. Be a fan of dignity, acceptance, and the human race. Volunteer, coach, or compete in Special Olympics. Special Olympics, be a fan. Hello, 
and welcome back to this edition of the Airport News Show. On today's program, we're talking about tips and suggestions to make your trip through the Jacksonville International Airport a little less stressful. On our first segment, we talked about parking and some of the amenities you'll see in the airport. And now for this segment, real important information about how to get through security checkpoint and things you can do from an airline and a transportation security administration perspective to make things a little easier on you. And I want to get right to my special guest because we have a lot to talk about. First, I want to introduce Mr. Ed Goodwin, who's the Federal Security Director for the Transportation Security Administration, TSA. Welcome, Ed. Thank you, Debbie. Well, it's always a pleasure to have you. You Always a pleasure to be here. Well, thank you for coming again. And next to you is Ms. Donna Woods, who is a customer service agent for Southwest Airlines. Welcome, Donna. Thank you, Debbie. We're so glad you could be here to give us some perspective from an airline uh, point of view, what to do and how to prepare as you come to the airport. So let's start at home. People are getting ready to travel. What are some things that they should really keep in mind as they are preparing to come to the airport? And Ed, if we could start with you. Uh, two things that I always say is one is, the, the first thing I would suggest is to go online. Most people have internet access. Mm -hmm. www.tsa.gov. G O V. Go on that website. It's a perfect. It's it's interactive website. And the first thing to do is look up, and it'll tell you what to do in order to prepare to travel. And it's just a little laundry list of things to consider and things to do. The rules uh, before you go. And then once you familiarize yourself with what you want to do to get to the airport. And the first thing I tell people is, is, when they're, is to check their bags. The biggest thing is to empty every suitcase completely before they start packing it. It's the biggest problem we run into is people leave stuff in their suitcase from previous trips that may have been OK if they were checking the bag. But now if they decide, hey, I'm going to carry that bag on the flight with me, uh, there may be things in there from their past trip that, that are going to be prohibited and aren't going to be able to go. And that's very important, like you said, for your carry-on. Donna, from checked luggage, is that important as well to know what you've got in there? Definitely. You have to know what you have in your bag. First, we have weight restrictions, and every airline is different on their weight restrictions. And like Ed was saying, with the websites, you know, go on the airline that you're traveling on the website to make sure you know what the weight restrictions are. Mm -hmm because you don't want to get at the ticket counter and have to empty your bag in front of everybody. <laughs> that could be pretty stressful, yeah. I imagine. And, and yeah. know what the rules are as far as how many bags and charges for bags that you're checking. You That's need. right. Every airline is different with that also. Um, with Southwest Airlines, our weight restriction is 50 pounds, and the bag limit is two bags per passenger, so per just, ticketed passenger. Right. But go to your airline and check those things because that could be pretty. Right, it could get costly because yes. if you yeah. you know check more than two bags, it's a twenty-five dollar charge with Southwest, or if it's over fifty pounds, it's also a twenty-five dollar charge. Wow, that so, can get expensive. You want to make sure that you have um, if you have paper tickets, don't pack them right. <laughs> in your bag. Right. You need those to travel with and your ID. And you also and, need your boarding pass out when you go through the security checkpoint. And we'll talk about once you get checked in and mm -hmm. you've got your bags all taken care of. As you're going to the security checkpoint, what are some things that you need to be prepared for as you're getting ready to get into that line, if there's a line? The line's usually very short. <laughs> the lines at Jacksonville are traditionally yes. very short, although you may find yourself in another airport where it may not be that way. but. The thing to remember is that the more information you have before you go to the checkpoint, the better off you'll be. So organization is the key. Mm -hmm. Whether you're organized in the fact that you know that you have a laptop in your bag and it needs, it's going to need to come out and things. So the more information you know and the more organized you are as you go to the checkpoint. And also, once you get to the checkpoint, take some time to read. There's plenty of signage that will tell you how to get through it without any problems. There's also there's usually an announcement or someone on a, on a, they have flat screen TVs there that will tell you helpful things to help you get through the checkpoint. And that's really important. It is, it is truly the, the, even if it's just 10 minutes, it's a 10 minutes where you really need to concentrate on getting through the checkpoint. You can't let 
You can't be daydreaming about uh, where you're staying the night or something like that. It really needs to be 10 minutes of concentration how to get through the checkpoint. And so once people are getting up in there, what kinds of things will they need to be prepared to do? As far, I know you call it divesting, so explain biggest thing a little is, bit about that. The biggest that. thing is, and I still do this when I go through a line, if I'm flying somewhere, I think of when I get to the front of the line, what am I, how many bins am I going to need? What am I going to take off? For me, I'm going to take off my sport coat, my shoes. What am I going to do with the things in my pockets and things like that? Where's my bag of, of, of 3.4 ounce or less clear liquids and gels? Where is that? Because that's going to come out of my whatever bag it might be in. It's going to go into a bin. If I have a laptop, that's going to go into a bin. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I think of all those things as I'm progressing through the line. And at the same time, like you said, make sure I have my ID and my boarding pass. Now let's go back to the 3.4 ounces. Uh, explain what the 311 is, because a lot of people traveling during the summer are not that familiar because they don't travel. This may be their one or two trip a year. So what is the 311? 311 is, again, now this is for baggage that you're going to bring onto the airplane with right. you, not check baggage. Those rules are different. 311 is three, meaning three point, actually 3.4 ounces or less, which is any travel size that you could buy in stores, drug stores, any local place of travel size, shampoo, toothpaste, and things like that. So any liquid gel or aerosol, excluding medications and things like that that are essential for a passenger. But liquid gels and aerosols, 3.4 ounces or less, uh, three, uh, that takes care of the three. Right. One meaning a one quart, they're going to be put into a one quart plastic bag, like a baggie, uh, you know, a Ziploc baggie, and that's to control the total amount of, of things you can bring into through a checkpoint. That's the other one. And then the third one is, is one, bag, one bag per passenger. So uh, there's your 311, and that's just the 311 is a nice simple thing to remember, and the fact that it does have to come out of whatever bag it's in, and it is put into a bin to be, and that's, you know, and that's strictly to make it be processed quicker and to keep the checkpoint flowing faster. And as you were talking about preparing, if you have your little 311 bag at home, put it in a pocket that's easily accessible once you get to the security checkpoint, so you're not having to open your whole bag or go searching for it. So that's all being prepared. Exactly right. Now, Donna, as far as any check bags, are there prohibit prohibitions against about what can be carried and where can people go to find out that information? Well, on the airline's website has a lot of information about what you can and cannot take as carry-on or in check bags. And now we, I get asked this question as well. People hunt or carry weapons of different sorts. Are those allowed in check bags? And what is the process if they are? To check a weapon, you must declare it. Okay. You have to verbally declare the weapon to the agent. When you check in? You, you have to tell us you have a weapon, and there is a declaration form that needs to be filled out mm -hmm. by the agent, and then you sign it. Um, but it also has to be inspected to make sure that the ammunition is packaged properly, um, that you have the proper amount of ammunition because there are limits on how much ammunition you can take. Right. Um, has to be unloaded. Um, if you do not declare the weapon, it is a federal offense. Right. So you, you can you will be you know questioned by the police. <laughs> right. So at that point. you absolutely That's... cannot carry it through your ch carry on. But even if you're checking it, you must declare it and let the airline know that right. you have it. You and need then to... they have their process. And they can check with the airlines. And that information is also on the TSA side? It's also available on TSA, correct. So there's different options where people can find that yes. information out. Now, as far as carry-on, I know that uh, there are limitations in the amount of liquids, gels, and paste. But Donna, what are some things that are critical that people should carry in their carry-on because you know sometimes bags might be a little late getting to them so what are some things that you recommend that people net always carry on their carry-on right if the bags are delayed which is how we like to say it right. okay <laughs> you always want to make sure you have your car keys with you. um, mm -hmm. right especially mm -hmm. if you're returning and oh, then yeah. your car keys are packed away you not only have you don't have your bag you also may not have access to your house or your car right um, also, your medication. Mm -hmm. 
medication. Don't pack your medication. You, it is allowed through security. Uh, you want to take that on the plane with you just in case your bag is delayed when you get to your destination. Okay. What about valuables or other papers and things like that? Right. It's, airlines do not, you're not insured for your valuables. Okay. So you want to carry those on. You want to make sure you have everything with you. Um, jewelry, right. your cash, any laptops, um, you know, are, it's a good idea to carry those on. Okay, so you know. anything that would cause a hardship or you right. would really, really miss. Right, or they could easily sure. get damaged or too, get damaged. you know, good because point. the bags mm -hmm. that sit up on other bags and, you know, if you have liquids in your bag, if you have a bottle of wine, you just got off a cruise and you bought some wine, you want to make sure it's packaged properly. I know with Southwest we have some um, air bubble bags that you can oh, purchase for five dollars okay. that air goes in it and um, protects the bottle and it also protects your clothes and other passengers bags as well if those bottles get cracked because checking them is okay but you can check them but mm -hmm. we are going to inspect to make right. sure that it's packaged properly right. and if it's not packaged properly then it's not going to be allowed to go because then it damages other passengers' bags as well. Because right. Jacksonville International, along with all the other commercial airports, everything that goes in the aircraft, checked or unchecked or carry-on, is screened. And so I know TSA manages that screening process as well. Right. So is there any tips as far as packing your checked luggage that might be helpful for people so that they would be less likely to alert a machine? No, uh, just just be careful with the, I mean, for, for, for bags that need to be checked by TSA downstairs, there is no, uh, you know, set rule that we can give them. Okay. I would just say that if you, if you are going to lock your bag, you know, there are, there are TSA approved locks. We certainly don't want to damage a bag to open it. We don't even want to damage a lock to open it. So we have keys to most locks, but if you want to use a TSA approved lock, it makes the process for us much easier and makes it a very quick process to go in, inspect the bag, make sure everything's fine in there, and then send it on its way. So if you are going to lock your bag, uh, please use a TSA approved locks, and they're available at a lot of different stores, Brookstones and things like that. Mm -hmm. And then that, that does make it a lot easier for us. Now, will the packaging at the store indicate that it's TSA approved, or can you get that information on the website? You can get it on the website, but also normally at the store, they will say TSA approved locks. Okay. Yes. And that's important to know. And if somebody, if for some reason your bag does have to be inspected, I understand there's a, they, they notify you? And we'll put an way? inspection sticker okay. inside the bag that we have inspected it. And we, and, and we do do a lot of quality control on that with our TSOs and to make sure that they try not to disturb too much in the bag to get to whatever it is that they are inspecting. And at the same time, we do try to return the bag back to the same condition as when we open the bag. So we, we do take as much care as we possibly can, but at times, you know, bags again get jostled back and forth. Right. But when we inspect the bag, we normally do very little intrusion. It's just, it might be as little as lifting up some, some clothing items to get to something that has alarmed the, uh, the, uh, the uh, machine right. and, then, and then look at it, decide, okay, this is fine. We just put everything right back the way it was. Inspection sticker goes on, bag gets zipped up, locked, and sent on its way. On its way. Okay, in five seconds or less, the most important tip you could give tra pa traveling passengers. Pack your patience and go to www.tsa.gov. Thank you. What about you, Donna? Any last words of wisdom? Allow enough time. Allow enough time. Uh, you need to allow enough time to get your bags checked. There's going to be lines. Mm -hmm. um, we like to recommend at least an hour in Jacksonville. Other airports have different right. um, hour and a half. Perfect. 30 minutes is a cutoff for checked luggage. Check bug. Thank mm -hmm. you. Be prepared and be patient. Well, mm -hmm. Ed Goodwin, Federal Security Director of TSA, Donna Woods, Customer Service Agent of Southwest Airlines, thank you so much for your help. And we thank you for joining us for this edition of the Airport News Show. Have a wonderful, safe summer.